Thank you, Anthony. That was beautiful as always. So whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life's journey, you are welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church, a part of the United Church of Christ. And uh, I don't know if you guys are much of sports fans. I'm, I'm somewhat a Red Sox fan and a little bit hard this year, but yesterday was quite the day for Boston. Uh, Red Sox beat the Cubs 17 to zero. Uh, the Celtics won, the Bruins won. So it was a kind of a fun day to be a Boston sports fan. And that kind of ties in with what we're gonna hear today in the gospel. Uh, because in the gospel, Jesus talks about joy. Not only our joy in believing, but also the joy Jesus has in believers. And we don't often talk about that. We don't often talk about faith as being reciprocal. We, you know, sometimes we think about faith as only us getting something from God. But God really enjoys us. And there's joy in us. And I don't know why the, <coughs> excuse me, the church doesn't like to talk about that. My fear is, is that um, the church for centuries and millennia now, has talked about the fear of God, uh, really emphasizing what happens if you don't believe, uh, because that can really, that really motivates people a little bit more than the idea of joy. And so if you talk a lot about the fear of not doing church, well, that can maybe put people in the church, but it's not the same being afraid of God is definitely not the same as being joyful with God. And so we're going to try to delve into that theme a little bit today during the worship, uh, through the gospel, through the first epistle of John, uh, through the sermon, and through the, uh, the prayers of the service. Uh, but also in our own thoughts, let's think about that fact that we bring joy to God just by being here. And I think that, that's a nice idea that we can put a smile on Jesus' face as we come together for worship. So in that spirit of uh, the joy that faith allows us to share in, uh, let us now turn to our opening hymn in candle lighting. Now the green blade rises from blue hymnal number 311. <laughs>
Come to worship God whose love is revealed in Jesus. Let all of the earth turn to God and better realize that each of us matters. We are called to love as God loves us, to recognize that we are all interconnected and interdependent. No one stands alone. All creation is cherished and held close by the Creator. We seek to let God's love be perfect in us and in the world. Christ is the vine and we are the branches. Jesus is our life source. We will bear fruit when we abide in the vine. Our souls are nourished, our enthusiasm is fed, and our expectations are raised by Jesus and his community and worship. And now coming together in worship, whether here in person, on Zoom, or later through FCAT, our unison prayer. Open our minds and imaginations to your will and word, O God. Abide deeply within and among us so that we may know you better. There is much in life that goes beyond our understanding, and to ask why does not question our faith. When we search for answers, you may be alerting us to new revelations. Make us alert to the opportunities that surround us in the world to live into our faith and to serve in Christ's name. Fill us with the good news so that in it we may find comfort and meaning and also share its blessings with others. Help us to reaffirm our covenant with you and each other. As we meet you now in worship, our hearts are lifted and our thoughts are set free to explore beyond human limits. May our worship glorify your name and fill us with your life-giving presence. Amen.
For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Thanks, Kathy. Well, would you like to come on up with your Sunday school teacher? Or? Let's go. There you go. Here we go. How are you? Why? Wow. Oh, to have such energy. Okay. So, so I um, we're going to be talking today in the gospel about Jesus's uh, parable. But before we get to that parable, uh, Jesus, we found out in the first gospel, Mark's gospel, he wasn't just the son of a carpenter. It says in Mark's gospel that he was a carpenter, and so so that is a nice piece of wood. And you see how it's like it, the edges are straight and, and you almost you can, like if they were blocks, you could almost put them together and build something. So Jesus as a carpenter, he would have been working with wood like that from a tree trunk that, you know, they cut and they planed and they made these nice pieces of wood. And, and then you can build stuff by putting them all together. Okay, that's what Jesus would be used to. But today in his gospel, in his parable, in his little story, Jesus talks about, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And so I've got all of this son of a gun bittersweet growing around my house, and so I have to keep cutting it back. But this is a vine, and you see the way that this vine branch right kind of wraps around, and then this one wraps around that, and it even like indents into the vine right here so that the two become one. I, you can't separate these. They're, 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 they're melded together. And so when Jesus talks about, I am the vine, and you are the branches, he gives up on this idea of the wood that he would have been familiar with, you know, building, all putting those pieces together and building something. Instead, Jesus says, I'm the vine and you are the branches because these are all the same. But Jesus, by saying this, he says different and gnarled and maybe not as pretty as all this, you know, what you can build with those. He says, this is what I am. So when he talks about building the church, building our faith, you don't have to be always the same. Where you come to Jesus can be one vine. Where I come to Jesus can be another vine. Where somebody out there comes to Jesus can be another vine. But to see the way we all wrap together and are strong and inseparable, we become strong together. And so Jesus doesn't use what he was familiar with. He comes up with this to emphasize that we can come to Jesus any way we want and we can all come together and build something strong like this vine and the branches. Okay, so thank you very much for coming up for Sunday school and for church. Thanks again, and thanks for lighting our candles this morning. Okay, have a good time at Sunday school. All right. And today's anthem is Blessed Quietness.
Okay, it's time for us now to share in our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. And we still offer our prayers uh, for the people of Ukraine and that nation. Uh, we pray for peace there instead of more war. Uh, we also pray for that war-torn area between Israel and Hamas, Gaza. We pray for peace there in what we call the Holy Land. And we pray that all of those horrible things that we have to watch on, on the news, that somehow they may figure out a way uh, to come together and solve their differences. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. Uh, before we hit the yellow sheet, does anybody have any joys or celebrations, concerns you'd like to share? Okay, let's go to our yellow sheet then. Let us offer prayers for Alan, Alice, Amy and Tom, Antonia and family, Angie, Art, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Brenda, Chris and family, Cheryl, Cindy, Edna, Frank, Grayson, Jeff, Jim, John, John, Kathy, Leslie, Lindy, Liz, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane and Joe, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Sandra, Sandra and John, Steve, Stephen, Virginia and Richard, Wink, the family of Margaret Rose, the family of Thelma Mokel, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And so, as we'll hear in the gospel, uh, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. Uh, that image of the sap of the vine flowing is the exact same sap that is in the branches. The life of one is the life of the other. So Jesus is deeply a part of who we are spiritually, internally. And so with that said, as we kind of pause from the public part of our worship and turn inward for just a few moments, um, there's an awful lot that is really intimate and close uh, between Jesus and each of us. And sometimes that closeness is so powerful that we can't even say it out loud. Um, it says in the Bible, with sighs too deep for words. So let us just for a few moments enjoy the silence, the blessed quietness of uh, just our talking to God uh, between ourselves and him in our hearts. So just a few moments of silence. loving Savior, whom we praise and glorify as your disciples, strengthen us today by your still speaking word and also by your abiding presence among this church and within each of our souls. Help us to respect God's love for us by moving past a fear of God's punishment so that we may instead embrace and be embraced by the perfect love that you showed throughout your life. Help us to honor and share the genuine love you bring into the world and to make welcome all those who yearn for a safe and uplifting community of faith. We ask that you hear all of our prayers and that you answer them as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> loves us so much that he is bound to us as branches are to the vine. He is the one who gives life to the soul and nurtures our growth. 
as the branches in the vine, they intertwine with one another, almost inseparable, we come together as community, supporting one another. Prune away the dead debris of our fear and failures so that we may grow more productive in how we choose to live our faith. And one way to do so is through our support of this congregation. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and also as our conditions in life allow. And they will be accepted now in person or if you are with Zoom or FCAT later, they can always be mailed to the church if you so choose. However you choose to help us do the work of God, it is appreciated. O Lord, these offerings, now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. Today's gospel is the famous one from John 15 of I am the vine and you are the branches. The very blood of Jesus flows through our spiritual bodies. The very breath of God is in our spiritual lungs. We are the living presence of God on earth today. He is the vine and we are the branches. And all of us coming together, just like I showed in the children's sermon, we're all intertwined, inseparable, and all building a stronger community for God to be present in our world. So for all that you do for this church so that we may be church, thank you and God bless you. And for all of your donations, thank you and God bless you. And may God bless these offerings to his holy purposes so that we may be church in this community. In his name we pray, amen. And our reflecting hymn today is In the Garden, Blue Hymnal number 300.
Today's gospel is taken from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8, a part of Jesus' parable of I am the vine. So I am the true vine, said Jesus, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch of me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear even more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. When I was a, a little kid, um, my best friend Gary lived just three houses down the road from us, and we were together all the time. And we, um, our, our playground was across the street, Westfield State College, and, and we would take our bikes over there, you know those old Playboy bikes where they had that back rest there that would go all the way up to your head and the, the, the handlebars, and we would go, all, we knew all the nooks and crannies of that college. And, and Westwood State College is up here, and then behind the college there's a bluff, some places a little, little literal cliff, and then down below you got like Route 20, which would take you from Westfield to the hill towns to the west. And so what we would do sometimes is we would go behind the college, and they had the vines, like I was showing uh, during the children's sermon, and we would cut the vines at the base, and then we would just run and swing on those vines way off the cliff. You know, just, just hanging out there in air. And boy, I'll tell you, as a little kid, that was so much fun. Just to, like that, that freedom, that liberation, that just hang, hanging out there in the, in the air like that. And down on Route 20, there was an apartment complex. And at that apartment complex, one time we're doing this, and we start to see some adults. They're gathering in the parking lot, and they're pointing, and they're waving and all that. And, and they must have been just having a great time watching these kids just being kids, you know, no concerns. Maybe they got to go off, you know, into the parking lot to get in their cars, go off to work. Maybe they got an errand they don't want to do. And they see these kids just having a great old time, just kind of swinging through the air. And I think it made them feel good as they were waving to us. And, you know, kids got an audience. You go even a little bit farther and faster and all that kind of stuff. But it was just wonderful holding on to the vine and just letting it liberate us, take us off the ground and into the air. And so I'd like to listen again to that parable that Jesus shares about I am the vine and you are the branches through the eyes of those two little boys, those young kids uh, that were holding on to the vine and holding on tight and, and just having joy in it and laughter in it. Because, you know, I, I think as we get older, um, sometimes we start to think about what happens if you let go of the vine. Um, and so there's a lot of that negativity. Like, you know, even as little kids, we knew you let go of the vine and you're going to have a broken something or other or even worse. And so we knew that was there, but we didn't think about it. We held on to the vine and we just enjoyed the, the, the freedom and the joy and the laughter of being able to swing out there like that. But I, I think as we get older, and I think the churches that we build, um, and sometimes the faith that we live, I think we start to forget that message of faith as joy. And sometimes, not all of us, but sometimes, and sometimes the loudest voices are the ones that talk about faith almost in terms of this, this horrible fear. And so then you get these verses like, whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. So that is definitely a, you know, said in today's parable, but I don't think it's the theme of today's parable. I think it's a contrast that really emphasizes hold on to the vine and see what it can do for you. But how many churches are going to be concentrating, because we share a common lectionary, and so I wonder how many churches and how many sermons today are going to be concentrating on the fact, what happens if you don't hold on to the vine? What's going to happen to those people who aren't here? What's going to happen to them who are gathered up these dead branches and thrown away and burned? Is that going to be their sermon? Is that what they're going to get out of that whole wonderful analogy, that parable of I am the vine and you are the branches? 
And so I want to think about that parable again through the eyes of kids. Uh, kids who were holding on and never thought about not holding on and just the joy that it brings. Because it says in that first reading, uh, the one that Kathy shared, um, God is love. And those Johannine epistles, there are three of them in the Bible. And uh, some of them don't even fill up a page. They're really brief. Uh, but they're, they're written after the gospel, and they're trying to help explain to the John's community about what's in the gospel. And, and in that epistle, it said that God is love. Think about all the millennia of theology that the Christian church has developed over who is God, who is Jesus, how do we all fit together. And John, like I said, in that third one, it's not even a full page in the Bible. Uh, in 1 John, he just comes up with this amazing three words, God is love. And if you get that, you get the theology. God is love. And, and you know, I, I think that's what we need to concentrate on, is that God is love, and that fear is not the same from the other side of the coin. You know, you can't scare somebody into loving God. Um, to love God uh, opens up the gates of salvation. To be afraid of going somewhere where God is not, you know, the other place, is not the same as being with God. You can't scare somebody into that relationship. And so whenever I hear religions and religious people talk about, you know, being scared of God, I, I just, it doesn't resonate with me. Maybe they're coming at it from a different perspective than I am, but it doesn't resonate with me. And I, I kind of worry about all of that anger and, and, and that fear that comes from religion. So th this past Monday, I'm watching television, one of those late night uh, comedy news shows, and they had Salman Rushdie on. And you remember, maybe about 30 years ago, he wrote Satanic Verses, and then Ayatollah Khomeini was so offended by the satirical book that he, he, uh, he issued a fatwa, I think they call it, and so that would allow any good person of faith to uh, kill Salman Rushdie because he was so um, blasphemous in the Satanic Verses. And so that was 30 years ago. And Salman Rushdie started to come out you know, more in public, and he is up in upstate New York giving a talk, and I think this was maybe a year or two years ago, maybe a little bit long, I'm not sure. Um, and one of these people who was motivated by a god of, of anger and who was afraid and, and heard these messages that this person is so bad he deserves to die, he charged the stage with a knife and he went and attacked Salman Rushdie and wanted to kill him. And Salman Rushdie was on television. He's got like a, um, a black patch over one eye because the guy got him in the eye and he can't see out of that one eye. He almost died. And so Salman Rushdie wrote a book called Knife, Meditations After an Attempted Murder. And in this interview I heard with him on Monday, he said, everybody's so angry right now that nobody can listen or talk to anybody else. So people, we just yell at each other. And there is so much anger in the world right now that anybody who's got a difference of opinion, we really do almost end up either not listening or yelling at each other. The idea of a conversation is not there anymore. And, and so that fear, it, it can be really kind of ushered in sometimes by religion and sanctified by religion in that whole idea about, you know, these useless branches, let them be gathered up, thrown away, burned. And it just doesn't do justice to the real message of I am the vine and you are the branches. So Jesus says that. And as I, I said in the children's sermon, as a carpenter, this would not be his normal vision of what wood should be. Wood should be like a nice straight tree trunk, you know, just uniform that you could make into workable planks and he could do his work with that. This stuff here is just like at my house. It's a weed that I have to cut down before it tears down the trees. But Jesus he, he doesn't go with what would be natural to him as a carpenter. He comes up with this, this imagery of, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. So the love that Jesus felt when he thought about God up in heaven, that deep, sincere, you know, just unbelievable, ineffable love that Jesus felt, he says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So that, that love between Jesus and God, that's what we have offered to us. Abide in my love. And so when I show this, you know, I, I showed this to one lady in, in, uh, in, in Hatfield this morning, and I guess she's more of an artistic spirit than I am. She said there's a certain kind of beauty in this. I don't see that, but she does. But the, there's, these branches are literally, they're all fused together, and it changes the shape of the other one, so they really become not three separate vines, but they really become just one vine. 
And so when Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches, this is what he was thinking about, all wrapped around each other, each affecting the other, each growing together and really almost inseparable. And when you think about when he says, abide in me, we can be as close to God as Jesus is to the, his relationship to God in heaven. That's what is being offered to us through faith. And when you really think about it, it's like that kid going off the ground and swinging out into the air. It really does lift you off the earth. It really does allow you to have joy. It really does allow you to have spiritual laughter because if we can be as close to God as Jesus was to God, like that vine is to the branches, the sap that is Jesus is flowing through us just as much as anywhere else in the world. And so that should really make us joyous. And so this parable was offered at the Last Supper. A little bit later, at that same meal, this is what Jesus says. The glory that God has given to me, the glory that he has given to me, I have given to them, to us. So the glory that God has given me, I give to you, so that they may be one as we are one. God up in heaven and Jesus as one, so that we may be as close to God in heaven, that we may be one, I in them, and you and me, that they, that we, may be completely one. Now every time I see these branches, these vines intertwined, and I think about that, and that they're inseparable, and I think that this is what Jesus had in mind, that these will become one, the glory, the love, everything else between God and Jesus is offered to us, it really does. It takes you off the ground and lets you soar free. That's what, that's what religion is supposed to do. Today's reading closes with these words. I have said these things to you so that my joy Jesus' joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. When we're into that kind of a relationship with Jesus, it's good for us, but I also like to think it's good for God. It's reciprocal. The vine and the branches feed one another. They share the same system. And so when we acknowledge God, even by giving him an hour on a gorgeous Sunday like this, and we choose to come here just to acknowledge God, that's not an obligation that we have to fulfill. It's not something we have to fear if we're not here. That is giving expression to a love and a glory and a connection that lifts us off the ground. It gives joy to God and it gives joy to us. So when we hear again that message of I am the vine and you are the branches, don't worry about the branches that are pruned off or cut off as dead and burned. Think about how close we are to God and let that joy fill us and let that joy change us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And the hymn of closing today is For the Fruit of All Creation, Blue Hymn Number 723.
Well, thank you for coming out and joining us for our worship on this beautiful Sunday. And if you'd like to continue, uh, the church uh, continues its work this afternoon at 2 o'clock in Burnettston with the annual association meeting for Franklin Association. And as I mentioned, and her name is um, Ma Mabrook, something like that. Um, she is really um, a good speaker with a lot to offer about the life of the church. And so if you'd like to uh, hear her words as well and represent our church, the association, uh, please join me up in Burnettston this afternoon at 2 p.m. So let us share in our benediction and our congregational response, and then I'm going to sneak off as Anthony does the postlude to get out of my vestments so that I can be here for your congregational meeting. So live for Christ every day, because Jesus lives in us every day. In gratitude for Jesus' love, we cast off the fear of judgment so that our faith is sincere and our lives are worthy examples of Christian service. We are empowered and equipped by the abiding presence of Christ. His life within and among us as this church fills us with purpose and energy. We are inspired by his closeness and readied to be his apostles. Therefore, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do among all whom we may meet. Amen. <laughs>